On this slide you can see the events that we defined in our events list. But now they're in two categories. The items on the left are those that just take the user to a different form. So when the user is on the main menu form and clicks the button data entry, that will take them to the data entry form. Likewise for BTN data retrieval, button cancel takes us back to the main menu form and button main menu, funnily enough, takes us to the main menu form from the data retrieval form. But the three events on the right, they require a little more thinking and we'll be going into those in some detail. But let's start with button data entry click. Here we're looking at how the user will travel from one form to another. Now it's a good idea, a neat little programmer trick, to start with a comment. For each event, and for each procedure for that matter, start with double slash and then explain what the event does. So in this case, this event takes the user to the form data entry. Now for a little bit of programmer speak. Whichever form the user is on at the moment, that's called me in most languages. Sometimes it's this. And what we need to do is we need to hide that form, so hide me, and then show the form that we want the user to be able to see. So show form data entry allows the user to see the data entry form. If we didn't have hide me, some languages will tuck the data entry form behind the current form and so they wouldn't see it. It would look as if it hadn't been done. So hide me and then show whichever form it is you want to show. Now we can carry that logic across to the next three events. The event BTN data retrieval click takes the user to FRM data retrieval, as it says in the comment. And of course you would put comments in. Hide me will hide the current form, main menu, and show form data retrieval will show the form that we want the user to see. Similarly, button cancel takes the user to the main menu by hiding the data uh, entry form and then showing form main menu. And similarly, button main menu click takes the user to the main menu form from uh, the form data retrieval. Hide me show for main menu. So those are fairly easy. Now we come on to those that require a little more explanation, although not a lot. Now we're going to look at the event form data entry load. So this happens when the data entry form actually loads, when the user says show form data entry. And you can see that outside of this procedure there are two variables being defined. Year, that appears to be misspelt and mistyped, and Grand Prix. Well, let's start with that. If you define variables within an event, those variables are only visible there. And we would like Year and the name of the Grand Prix to be visible in several different events. So we have to define them outside of the event. That's scope. Scope says if you define a variable within an event, only that event can see it. In this case, we want Year and Grand Prix to be visible in another event. So they're defined outside. Now let's go back to Year. Why double ER? Well, Year, as in Y-E-A-R, is a reserved word in some languages, so it's not a good idea to use that. Where you've got names of variables that are also used as commands in some languages, misspell them. Standard programmer trick. But why is year text and not integer? Surely 2011, say, is an integer. 
Yes, it is, but we're not using it as such in this program. Year is only going to be used as a part of a file name. And because that's going to be treated as text, and we're never going to be doing any arithmetic with it, we're going to call it as text. Its type is text, even though in ordinary usage, 2011 would be integer. Grand Prix as text is just saying that the name of the Grand Prix is going to be text, and that's fairly simple. Now again, we start with the comments. This event allows the user to enter the year and the name of the Grand Prix. So we have the commands year equals input in which year was the Grand Prix. So the user would type in something like 2011. And then the next line says Grand Prix equals input. What was the name of the Grand Prix? And in this case the user would type in something like say Monaco and then the event ends. So what we would end up with is year containing the letters 2011 and Grand Prix containing the word Monaco. Now we need a bit of theory. File handling in computing is not obvious. And you've got to imagine that there's a pipe between your computer and the file itself. And you're going to be shoveling bits of information up or down the pipe, depending on which direction things are going in. So you need to establish that pipe. And then if it's going from your computer to the file, it's being output from your computer. If, on the other hand, the file is being read in to your computer, it's input. Now we need to hang on to that. We need the pipe and the output and input directions for what's coming next. So let's see how the user would save data. Well, first of all, we're going to have the comment that this procedure, this event, saves data as a, in a text file. And then we're going to define the, the variable file as text. Now notice that file has been intentionally misspelt again because that's another one of those special words. And the text that's going to go into file is the year plus the name of the Grand Prix plus the characters .txt. So if we were going back to the 2011 Monaco Grand Prix we would have file containing 2011monaco.txt and that would be the name for our file. Now the next thing is to open the file for output. What that does is create that pipe down which we're going to send things. And if we create a pipe we've got to clear the pipe afterwards. So there's a close file below it. It's one of those begin and end situations. You need the pipe and when you've finished with it you get rid of it. So having opened the file for output, in other words we're sending things to file, what do we do? Well we output whatever is in the text box driver 1 with a little squiggly line and the name of the team that won. So the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to create some text that is the name of the driver, squiggly line and name of the team for the ones that won. And it's going to send that to a file. In other words it's going to send it down that pipe that we've just created. Then it moves on to the second driver and outputs the driver name, little squiggly line and the name of the team for which that driver is driving to the file and so on down through each of these until we get to output txt driver 10 plus squiggly line plus txt team 10 going to the file. When it's done that we close the file. 
we shut off the pipe. We need to do that because lots of pipes being open will not only mess up the computer's memory, it saves an awful lot of stuff in memory that isn't necessary if the pipe's not going to be used, but it's also a security risk. Later on, when you're dealing with languages that go over the internet, leaving a file open can lead you, leave you open to hacking very, very quickly. So let's move on to the final event. Button find race click. Well this reads the data from a text file and displays it. Now we've already established that we know year and Grand Prix. So file as text will create the name of the text file again. It makes the name that we're going to give that pipe. Notice that I'm creating another two variables. Record as text, and that's just going to be one line of text that comes in from the file. But I've misspelt it because, as you've guessed, that's one of those special words. And we're going to have a counter because in this case, this event is going to have a counted loop. Now we can carry on down and open file for input. So this is creating the pipe between your computer and the file, but this time it's for input, it's data that's coming into your program. Now we're going to create a loop. So counting from 1 to 10 using counter do. So we're creating a loop that will, in this case, input from file into the record Record is just a piece of text, so we can output that plus a carriage return line feed, which is the technical term for pressing enter if we were actually doing word processing. So we can output record plus an enter into label race result. Label race result is where we're going to show the user what it is that we found in the file and then it's going to go round and round that loop putting the records into label race result as it goes. So counting from 1 to 10 using counter do first time round counter will be 1 second time 2 and so on until it's read all 10 lines that are in that file because every file must have 10 lines that's how we specified it. The loop command sends us back to counting from if we haven't reached 10. When we have finished the loop and we've read everything that's in that file, we can close the file. We put the pipe away. End the event and hey presto, our program plan is finished. <laughs>